handsome cynic i'm back with another video this one's probably quicker than the last one i made and i'm gonna upload but yep real quick i mean i also i want to promote this again i'm starting a new live stream which will be most likely saturday nights on the weekends which is why it's called weekends with the handsome cynic it's most likely going to be the first saturday of february which is the fifth most i remember correctly even though it might be the, the next saturday because i'm Maybe going away. I'm not sure yet. I don't have a guest lined up yet, but that is coming soon. So stay tuned to the channel or stay tuned to my Twitter, which is probably our main account, which is going to be at AngelJRivera08. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be an exciting thing. And I'm excited to bring that to you. Hope you guys enjoy the stream, which is coming soon. And let's get to today's video topic. Right now, I came. This is aired on today's twenty fifth, so this aired Sunday on Reliable Sources with um, Ryan Felter, I believe his name is. Anyways, they he they actually run a segment about how students are being propagandized to look out for fake news or or to um, make sure the fake to look out for the difference between fake news and what they term to be legitimate news or real news. This is this is the curriculum from the News Literacy Project, which which is a um, which is a um, outlet, uh, or I'm not sure if it's a um, not sure, as I assume I'm not sure if a super PAC or some sort of charity or a political action committee is a PAC. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's um, it's um, financed by news organizations. So I'll show you the website in a minute, but I wanted to play this video real quick before. And then, you know, we'll get to uh, who is a part of the, which news, organiza news organizations are part of the News Literacy Project. So we'll get to that in a moment. But first, I want to play this real quick for you guys. Uh, let's get rid of that. All right, let's watch this. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Barbara Good morning. King wants to arm this eighth grade class. All right, so today's topic is misinformation. With the tools they will need in a world of information saturation. We're going to learn to identify the various types of misinformation. Information saturation. What does that mean? That basically means, like, oh, well, there's way too much information out there online. So now we have to train you and make sure you know which news organization to trust and which one and which not to trust. So that's that's what that means. There's like there's way too much information. It's saturated with information. It's just trust trust your authoritative media sources. Misinformation. And there is a lot to learn. They're called satire, false context, imposter content, manipulated content, and fabricated content. Just imagine trying to make sense of all of this as a teenager. Now we go to. Uh, so why are you trying to teach teenagers about this? Who cares? They're why? 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 If imagine if you're a teenager trying to learn all this, yeah. Why are you bothering to teach them this? Why? In, because it's not about teaching them. It's about propagandizing them to make sure that they don't listen to independent media sources. That's what all this is about. They want you to trust their um, authoritative sources. Their sources. Is. Interesting. Let me try it again. They want you to trust their, they want these kids to trust the authoritative sources. Sources. Jeez. Go to imposter content. What does imposter mean? Like someone trying to be someone else, right? You get that word with an imposter. So an imposter content uses either a well known name, a brand, or a logo to fool people into believing that it's, it's authentic. As the web becomes even more of a wild west every day, the students here at PS. I love how Brian Felter puts it. As the web becomes more of a wild, wild west. So he's, they're mad. CNN is mad because they are not the gatekeepers of information anymore. Because there's freedom online to get all the information you want. CNN hates that. So they, they want to make sure that you get the information only from them and the other authoritative sources. PS 207 in Queens, New York know that they need these lessons. A lot of students have social media, and if they're looking at stuff that is like wrong and just telling everyone that, that it's right, and they're just giving everyone false information. King began teaching media literacy seven years ago. 
Why the initial impulse to teach about this? I feel it's a skill that... Uh... Wait, seven years ago. So that would put it, we're in 2022 now. Um, 2015? I'm not going to actually go and do the math. I'm pretty sure it's 2015. Around the time Trump came to prominence. What a coincidence that turned out to be. Uh, that my students really need. Um, there's too much misinformation around us in the world. And I want to give them some tools to make sense of what they're seeing. She uses curriculum from the news. News Literacy Project. Here it is. It, Brian Stelter is going to omit something in this segment, which is pretty important. News Literacy Project, a nonpartisan education nonprofit. Founder Alan Miller says the. I'll get to a minute what he omits from the News Literacy, Literacy Project, but who actually helps finance the new finance the News Literacy Project? So. I think you're going to, you know where I'm going with this, but let me finish the video. These lessons are now used by more than 37,000 educators. What do, I, what do I mean by, by I right. want you to. I didn't look this up because I literally couldn't find anything on it. Maybe if I do look it up, I might find something on it, but I haven't been able to find it yet. I'm pretty sure it's 37,000 educators are all in blue states. I'd be shocked there's any educator in red states that are actually using this, this um, curriculum. I want you to critically think about what you're seeing on the internet. The okay. goal is to equip future generations of savvy news consumers. So in the picture, it looks like, like a car is like on a highway and there's like a shark in the water. Oh my God. <laughs> Excuse me. That is so ridiculous. That's obviously fake. I mean, it's like, yeah, there's, there's a shark in the freeway in Houston, Texas. I mean, that's obviously a manipulated content. I mean, you can tell you don't need a teacher to tell you that that's fake. I mean, what do you, I mean, you can't be that, these kids aren't that stupid, I don't think. They grew up in the internet age, and you know, they can, there, there's a lot of fake stuff on the internet. This is so stupid. And what was, okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at uh, what type of uh, a social media? What, is, what kind of account is that? Twitter. Twitter. It's an infamous fake, one that gets reshared every time there's a hurricane. No shit. I mean, it's a fake. I can tell instantly how fake that is. <laughs> They're going to pretend that people are stupid and don't know that this is a fake. This is like everybody fact checks, fact check, fact check. <laughs> Let's keep going. And these students are sharing tips so they don't get fooled. On Google, there's a little picture of a camera and you can add the image in there and it will reverse search. So ultimately, news literacy is about something bigger. It's about basic critical thinking skills. Correct, yeah. correct. How do you try to connect those dots? No, it, it would be the exact opposite. They don't want these kids to have critical thinking skills. Instead, what they want them to do is just watch corporate media and authoritative media sources. That's what they want these kids to do. It's the exact opposite of what they want from these kids. Um, well, th to me, this is a real world problem. It's, uh, it's, so it's very easy to bring that in when, I, when they start realizing I can utilize these skills in anything that I do. After the class, students told me the lessons hit close to home. Do any of you feel like you try to correct friends or family now based on what you've learned? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, like when COVID first started, like my family like thought that wow, this is a hoax, but then I'm like, this is real. Like, people are really dying, getting sick from it. I really just wanted to believe that it was fake, you know, because I didn't want that to really happen to me. But it was real, and it just changed everyone's lives, honestly. I mean, that gets to the motivations of you, you want to believe something, but you got to face reality head on. Are there, like, fake articles? Like, you maybe you want to believe it, but, like, it's not true, and you have to, like, research if it's really true or not. More traffic into this fake site. They also said okay. their peers would Let's benefit from this class. Do you all feel like every student needs to be learning news literacy? Yeah. 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 Okay, that's that. Um, so this idea, hold on, let me turn on my webcam. This idea that, they, uh, I'm not going to make fun of these kids. They're kids, and ultimately they're being propagandized into believing this stuff. So it's not really their fault. I'm not gonna make fun of these kids. But one thing I will say is for CNN to use these kids in order to promote the News Literacy Project is disgusting, it just is. And I wanted to show you guys the News Literacy Project. Let me um, share my screen again. Bear with me one second. 
All right, here we go. I wonder, can you see that? I think you can. Let me see. See the media partners. Now, this is what um, Brian Stelter omitted from his report, or at least in this little clip. I'm not sure if he, if he turns out that he did talk about this later, but he did omit this from that video. So I wanted to show you guys real quick. It turns out that once you look, go down to media organizations, participating media organizations, look who's here. Um, let me see. Right there. You can see CNN's logo right there. So CNN is at least, the very least a part of this organization and helping finance it, obviously. So they, or else they wouldn't be there. So that's what Brian Stelter is. It's a lot of, a lot of political, ProPublica, the San Francisco Chronicle, Univision is here, the Wall Street Journal, uh, 60 Minutes, and ABC News, etc. But CNN's right there, as you can see. So yeah, they, Brian Seltzer omitted that from his report. It would have been nice if he would have said, hey, look, by the way, CNN is also part of his organization. That's it. He didn't have to. And he's the media critic of CNN, you know. So he did a piss poor job there of omitted the, omitting the fact that, at least in this report, that the News Literacy Project is partly funded by CNN the news organization, the news organization that he works for. So, yep, that would be nice if he would have said something and would have been honest there. But, of course, he's not honest because this isn't about that. It's about propaganda, you know, and making sure the students, <clears throat> making sure the students, you know, don't trust independent sources of media on Twitter and on YouTube and on Facebook and on Odyssey, Rumble, which whatever, just trust the authoritative media sources that are part of the news literacy project. That's who you need to trust, kids. You don't need to trust independent media sources. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, that'll. That's what I wanted to show you guys a, a little video there. I'm pretty much done with this. This is shameful by CNN to for airing this. This is also. Let me turn this on. There you go. This is shameful by CNN. You know, they should be ashamed of themselves for this, but I'm sure they're not. I'm sure they love every second of doing this because that's their job ultimately. Their job is to make sure they secure an audience for the next 20 years, 30 years, when this next generation is coming up. That's all this is about. They don't want them watching, getting all the information on the internet. They want to be the gatekeepers. So that'll do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter. Here it is. Uh, again, then you can see my Twitter is there, so you follow me there. I'm a part of the Indie, Indie News Network, as you know. Here it is right there. The link tree is in the description box below. Check that out. Check us out. We all are great. Big things are coming up in this year for us. Also, subscribe to my Odyssey Rumble and Twitch. The link tree, my link tree, personal link tree is in the description box below. Check that out. You can email me. You can follow all my social medias. All my pages are right there. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys soon.